Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Do not buy a gaming headset. You might have already heard that from many sources, or you're probably thinking, what? What do you mean don't buy gaming? It's for gaming, I'm a gamer. I wouldn't buy a gaming headset, I wanna hear and talk. Let me explain. This is a gaming headset. This is the Gamdias Hephaestus gaming headset. I don't know which exact model. And you know, uh, Gamdias sent this to me a long time ago. Um, and for review and uh that was back when i had no idea about audio about headphones so i don't remember what i what my final verdict was you can look it up but now i stand by my initial thing that i sent the video which is no matter how cheap or even no matter how expensive because you know you might think if it's more expensive it's actually good don't buy a gaming headset but for those who are confused by why you shouldn't buy a gaming headset this will be kind of a longer video but i'm trying to explain to you as as in depth as i can so gaming headsets usually for their price are really really bad they're just they're bad in everything that they try to tell you that they they do well first of all if you just think about it the companies who make your keyboards they probably have no idea how to make you know, I didn't have anything about audio. So a headphone just has the headphone driver in it and and the actual plastic that makes the chassis of the headphone. This has the drivers, but it has, if it's a wireless, it has batteries. It has uh, its own DAC, which is a dig digital audio converter. Um, it has a microphone, has all the extra internals and circuit boards that, you know, give it all the extra features that gamers want or, really just want they don't really need it so i didn't really articulate this point that i'm talking about right now well so what i meant to say was that the headsets with all these extra features and gimmicky features that a lot of the ones have like you know buttons that can you know you can hotkey to do certain stuff um uh it's just that they add to the price of the headset and they're they don't uh, and for the price they don't really use that money and that extra features towards making a better audio quality uh, headphones that's what i wanted to say when i when i was saying that there's you know headsets have a lot of intern more internals than just normal headphones um so it's not really a con if you if unless you, obviously if your headset doesn't have all those extra features but you know they do add weight like all those extra things inside um and i'm not sure if they add like noise um but like, yeah, but it, it's not really a con. It can be a con though if it drives up the price. So that's one thing. That's not really a con per se. Um, it just, you know, adds weight to it. It's, it might, you know, it's not really a con. I'm just an uh, observation. The cons come in that they have to make a head a headphone part where actual audio and they have to have a mic. And to do both of those things in with one, in one product at a lower-ish price point without you know, spending all their money on the headphone or spending all the money on the mic just makes for a product that has a bad audio quality and a bad mic quality. So it's headphones are convenient. That's the biggest selling point, even though they don't say it, that really is the biggest selling point for most casual gamers, even competitive gamers too. Um, they're convenient. You, you, you have audio and you have a mic all in one. You don't have to buy a mic, you don't have to buy a desk mic, and you don't have to worry about uh, uh, two cables because like it's one USB cable. So yeah, that, that's pretty much why most gaming headsets are just utter utter garbage for their price. There are some that are good, like you know, everyone you know praises the HyperX's and the, I'm pretty sure some Steel Serieses and even Sennheiser themselves. They make gaming headsets. Those are either really expensive, like hundred plus, or they're still not even worth their price um, because as I, I am gonna say now, and as many YouTubers have said before in the past, you can make your own gaming headset that sounds much better, that, you know, the audio quality is much, like, 10 times, I'm not gonna say number, but the audio quality is miles and a head better than any gaming headset for the same price point can can give you, even more expensive ones, are actually. Um, and the mic quality, because you have to buy a separate mic, is also better, because, again, it's not... It's not one company uh, making two things, so then they're both, in, they're kind of half effort for both. You have one headphone and one separate mic, and of course, that's going to be the best qual um, quality for both. So that is the first part of this video, why you shouldn't buy a gaming headset to reiterate, you know, companies, mo well, first of all, most of the time, companies don't know anything how to make a good audio, uh, how to make good headphones in the first place. Second, um, they can be decent audio and a decent mic, but then again, they can't, you know, master one of them. It's a jack of all trades, and if for gaming, you want the best audio. Your mic quality, you're not, you know, recording a video, 
is not important. So you want the best audio quality and audio fidelity and headsets just can't give you that. And if they do, like their Hyper, HyperX's or even the Sennheiser's, um, you can get a much better audio quality for a lower price or, or much, much better for the same price if you spend on, you know, headphones that are the same price as a $150 gaming headset. $150 gaming headset or um, these are not $150, but $150, you know, Sennheiser's or AKG headphones. <laughs> the, the AKG and the Sennheiser's will smash the audio quality and fidelity, the sound stage, the imaging, out the headset out of the water. I, I totally worded that wrong. It's just way better. And that's it. And that's the expensive tier, even at $50. 50 okay, so $50 gaming headsets, pretty much all of them, they're garbage. Don't buy any, like, $50 gaming headset. And if you're saying, well, you know, I, I know that hey, gaming headsets are bad, but, you know, they're cheap and they're convenient. There are cheap alternatives that I will show you in the second part of this video, which is, I think I'm, I think I've explained to you enough. So it's coming now. So yeah, you got that. Don't buy a gaming headset because for like the 15th time, the headphone quality, the audio fidelity that you're hearing is bad for its price. And the mic is also bad. It just, everything about it is, is bad. So yeah, don't buy a gaming headset. Here's what you should buy instead. So let's say your budget is, you know, you're really strapped for cash. All you really want is just to hear your game and to talk to your friends. You're a very, very casual gamer. And you might be thinking, well, then is it still good to buy a headset? Sure, if you, you know, really, really don't care. Uh, but you can spend $50 on a good head, good headphones and a good microphone for $50 or less, maybe a little bit more with I don't know, shipping and taxes or whatever, but. So this is the Superlux HD 668B semi-open headphones. These are $40, $40 headphones. And for their price, um, I have similar headphones. These are, these actually look pretty, really similar to the Superlux. I'm pretty sure, so these these headphones I've had for like two years now, uh, they are the Samsung SR8. 850s, which is right here, Samsung SR850 uh, semi-open back headphones. Uh, these are different ones. I think these have, yeah, mine just look different than these, but if you can find, I'm pretty sure, yeah, these, as you can see, it's it's only available from third party sales right now. So I actually wouldn't recommend buying it at this moment, unless it comes back or something. But um, this, if you're really strapped for cash and you don't really, um, you're a very, very casual gamer, you're just playing Fortnite on your PS4, still get these headphones they're 40 bucks and the sound quality the sound stage the imaging if you don't know what sound stage, sound stage and imaging are i'll get to that in a bit um are way 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 better and these are pretty much i'm gonna pretend that these are the same because these were 50 dollars 50 canadian dollars i'm pretty sure and these are miles and a head better than these gaming heads than this gaming headset and this gaming headset was more expensive than these uh, Samsung SR850 headphones. And when I'm referring to these, again, I'm referring to these Superlux because these are available right now. They're $40. And I'm pretty sure the, the Superlux even has better audio quality and uh, imaging and soundstage than, than this, but don't quote me on that. That's something I haven't actually tried these. These are the only headphones I have right now. So sound, what is soundstage and imaging? Basically, soundstage is how wide your music and your audio sounds um, in when you're listening to audio from your headphones. So most headphones are closed back. Uh, these headphones, and actually pretty much all the headphones I'm showing you now, are open back, meaning that the outer part of the, the, the cup, the headphone cup, there are holes in it. As you can see, there are holes right there. There is a grill, and it's exposed. There, It's going in straight into the driver. Um, it's not fully covered. There is, you know, it, there are some little holes there, and that lets audio pass out. So, open back headphones, if you really want to get in depth, just search for open back headphones versus closed back headphones on YouTube. You'll find a really a much better explanation, but you know, uh, layman's terms, um, they widen the sound stage because they're not closed back. It's like a closed back headphone, which is most consumer headphones are, there's no holes. It, it's, it's all closed the, the plastic or whatever shroud is covering the drivers from the outside. So your, the sound stage is very narrow. Your music is, is, and your audio is basically only in a very, small area around your head it's 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 like kind of claustrophobic but for you know recording uh, for uh, recording audio and for mixing and mastering that's better because you hear all the sounds uh, closer to your head again i'm not an audiophile i'm not an audio expert but this is what a lot of research uh this is just me saying what i've researched another kind of open back is they leak audio like crazy obviously because there's holes here there's nothing covering it so the audio that you're hearing is also leaking out um so everyone around you can hear 
what you're listening to at roughly around the same volume. Uh, you should really only use them when you're in a quiet room because you can also hear, uh, you know how some headphones are really noise isolating? He uh, open back headphones are not, nice, not noise isolating at all. Why you want open back headphones for gaming is they give a bigger sound stage. So instead of feeling claustrophobic and your audio just like only here, you can, it's almost as though you're, there are speakers around you in your room and that's and that's what an open back headphone can deliver so that's good because for gaming it does provide uh, better imaging which means you can pinpoint where footsteps are and where, and where people are and where gunshots are and it's just a more immersive experience because you know if you're in a big open world like a far cry game you can hear stuff over there and stuff over there and it's, it's as though it's actually like real surround sound that 7.1 bull crap is all fake and that's another thing what people might asking but headsets have 7.1 virtual surround sound no it's total utter garbage that the virtual surround sound that uh, gaming headset manufacturers say it's so bad it's, n it's it's not good at all open back headphones that's a, that's the legit way to get surround sound uh if you just open back headphones basically so the super locked hd 68 b's dynamic headphones um they're natural they're spatial and accurate sound, as I'm kind of reading it off here. Um, they're really good for gaming. Uh, even some, you know, bigger YouTubers who are actually audiophiles recommend these for the, the cheaper level. Now you might be thinking, well, Justin, I need a mic. That's why I have a gaming headset. I need to talk to my friends. Well, you pr everyone and their mother knows about this, the Antline Audio Mic. Now, the downside about this, uh, and this is actually the accessories page, I'll talk about that in a bit. The downside about the Antline audio mic is it's a little bit expensive. I'm pretty sure it's in the $40 range, so that's already about $80 plus the six uh, plus the headphones. So that's you know definitely a lot more expensive than a $50 gaming headset. But then again, for only $30 more, you get much much better audio quality when you're listening to. And the mic is actually really good. So it's more expensive than your headphones, and obviously you want to spend most of your budget on your headphones. Or you just wanna you wanna have your headphones be really as as the best as I can within your budget. So I mean, because if you're tight for cash, you don't want to do forty dollar headphones and forty dollar mic. But if you do have money spare, you should just buy a desktop mic. But if you want the convenience of just having your mic there, the Antline Audio Mic very popular. You should you should get it. So if you're on a console and you have the Antline Audio Mic, you you really need this Antline Audio Wire Adapter because. Obviously you need to plug in the mic because it's two separate cables. You have the Antline audio mic because they're two type of products and the headphone cable. You need this Antline audio Y adapter to um, plug both things into the adapter and then plug the single 3.5 millimeter jack into your controller. And that's how you can use it on your console. You can also use this one, the Antline USB sound card. Again, you plug your mic and your headphones in. You have a USB so you can plug it into your PS4. They said it only works for PS4, so I'm pretty sure if you if you want to be sure, just buy the Y adapter. It's more expensive, but I'm pretty sure it works with everything. If you bought headphones that have a detachable 3.5 cable, you can buy this V-Moda Boom Pro mic, which also it's also forty dollars, so it's a bit on the expensive side. But this is actually Canadian. I don't know why I'm the Canadian side. So this should be less expensive on the U.S. Here it is. So I'm sorry, the V-Moda Boom Pro mic. It's actually thirty dollars, so it's twenty dollars less or ten dollars less uh, for American money. It's still a little bit on the expensive side. Again, thirty dollar mic and then a forty dollar head uh, headphones. So I'm pretty and also I'm pretty sure a lot of headphones don't have a detachable cable. Uh, as you can see, the bottom here, right there, it's not. You can't pl use the V-Moda mod mic with that because it's a uh, male to male so the v moda boom pro i would recommend less because it's you can only use it on detach a headphone that have a detachable cable now here's what you should get again this is 30 dollars it's a desktop mic so you have to, if you're if you're a console gamer um this is kind of harder to use you really do want to get the antline mod mic right uh so but if you're a pc gamer and you want to get a, a good headphone and mic this is the Fee Fine. I don't know how to pronounce Fi Fine. Uh, it's a USB condenser microphone. I, I'm pretty sure I, Linus Tech Tips did a review on this, or you can just and anyone did a review on this. Every, everything is on YouTube. Um, I don't. It's thirty dollars. You're probably not gonna be, get the best mic quality, but again, you don't really care about that if you're just gaming and you want to talk to your friends. If you want to do a little bit of streaming, maybe get the Blue Snowball Ice. So this is really, really popular for its performance and auto quality to price ratio, the price to performance ratio. It's a it's a really good uh, microphone for, for $50. 
and I'm pretty sure it's the best $50 microphone. I dare I, I said it. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you do want to do a bit of streaming and recording, you probably have a little bit more money. So get the blue snowball ice for your mic. So that's pretty much the end of this video. I'm the reason why it's a bit longer is because I have some more recommendations for people who have a higher budget. But if you're if you're that gamer who doesn't want to spend like even $80 on something, get the Super Lux headphones 668B and this $30 mic you're good. Or if you can bump your budget up to maybe $80, get the Antlide mod mic and this headphone, you will not regret it. You can basically attach the mod mic to the headphone and it sticks there. It has an adhesive that sticks to the headphone itself and the mod mic is detachable with a magnet so it's not gonna break on you. And you can have a two-in-one setup if you just, you know, uh, kind of connect the two wires of the mod mic and the headphone together with like zip ties. You can have almost the same convenience as a gaming headset for $30 more but you get much, much, much better audio quality and even mic quality. And you get the big sound stage because they're open backs, they're semi open backs, and you get the you know precise imaging um, that is actually legit precise imaging that you can actually see where footsteps are without that 7.1 virtual surround sound bull crap. And for those people who, who are curious to stick around or have a little bit bigger budget, you can keep watching. I have some more headphones uh, to recommend. The mics itself, you don't really want to spend that much on a mic unless you're recording videos and streaming or whatever. So if you're just talking to your friends, just get a very cheap mic. There are a lot of cheap mics you can find online or maybe in third party ones. So now I'm gonna be talking about a bit more expensive headphones. These are very, very popular open back headphones. The Sennheiser HD 598s and the newest version is called the SR. Um, these came out a long time ago and they're probably the most, as you can see, 1000 customer views on Amazon. That is a lot. It's a very, very popular headphones. Um, pretty much, uh, there's a saying that like no one hates the, the 598s. It's, it's a rhyme. From all my research that I've done making this video, everyone loves them. They're really good um, audio quality for the price. Um, they're very, very wide sound stage. For an open back headphones, they have a wider sound stage than most open back headphones, which is a good and bad thing. With a big sound stage, it's more immersive. It's, it's you know, it's almost as though you actually have speakers, but um, many say that the imaging is worse because if you have a closer sound stage, it's easier to pinpoint where the footsteps are and stuff like that. So another edit here, I keep making these. Uh, this is actually not true what I said when I said that the bigger sound stage e equals worse imaging. Um, you know, actually with, with the more expensive headphones, a bigger uh, sound stage is probably better for imaging because you can actually tell the the you know the position they are like if they're like 285 and you can also tell the distance like are they five feet away or 10 feet away or 15 feet away so yeah that's totally wrong the bigger sound stage on more expensive headphones um and if they still have good imaging which they probably do if they're more expensive that's definitely better than a smaller sound stage so but what i what i went to say was that with the 598s people many have said that the imaging isn't that good um, and I don't know if that's due to the big sound stage, but that's just that's just how it is. The so I mean it's it's still very good compared to the imaging is still very good on these 598s compared to closed backs and other uh, less expensive ones. But they're not the they're not the imaging is not you know top notch compared to other headphones that are just maybe a little bit more expensive or even at the same price. So yeah, that's that's wrong. That's sorry. <laughs> the biggest recommendation I can say to people is. Um, go to your a local Best Buy or if they don't have headphones there, like a B&H Audio Video and just try out open back headphones. The 598 SR, they're neutral sounding headphones, meaning that they don't have a lot of bass, um, but they don't. They're really kind of more accurate. They're not like studio quality accurate, but they're still more a neutral sound system. They're kind of flat. Um, but the, the, the biggest pro of this head of these headphones are the big sound stage. That's why people like them so much. And that's why they're good for like media consumption and, and gaming and stuff like that. Again, all these uh, headphones that I will be uh, recommending are open backs because they're just better for gaming and just they're a really cool experience. Also, the preferred frequency response uh, in general for gaming is you don't want too much bass. They do add more immersion when you're playing games with like a lot of explosions, but they sometimes muddy up details that you know, competitive gamers want in multiplayer games like footsteps. Again, footsteps are, you know, kind of high pitched. They land, they land more in the frequency of like the mid, the high mid or the, the treble ranges. So if you have headphones that have good detailed highs and, and, and not too overpowering basses, that's the preferred for most people, uh, sound signature, uh, for, you know, your, your headphones. So, and the, the Sennheiser's 
these 598s. I see most headphones I'll be showing you don't have too overpowering bass. So if you do want you know overpowering bass, you, you they don't really fit well to the gaming unless you don't really care about where you know footsteps are. You just want a big boomy you know gaming audio experience. So, but uh, in saying that, these are the Sennheiser HD 579. They're newer than the 598s. Um, their soundstage isn't as big or as wide as the 598s, but they do have more colored sound, I'm pretty sure, than the 598s. Um, they have a little bit more bass response. I'm pretty sure they're more similar than they are different though, but you can do some more research. I'm not an expert again. So these are a bit more expensive because they're newer and I'm pretty sure they're, the audio quality is better than the 598s. Um, so yeah, these are so these are for $20 more or whatever, you can get a bit more bass response, a bit more, bit better audio quality, and but you sacrifice a bit of soundstage, but that could be a good thing because the imaging could be better. So yeah, those are the two entry levels for around the $150 range. If you want to go a bit more, these are, I'm pretty sure these are the headphones that Ninja uses. So if you want to be, if you want to be like Ninja, he uses the Bear Dynamic DT990s. I don't know which, there's so many versions of this headphones. I don't know which one, exact one he uses, but he uses the, I'm pretty sure he uses the Bear Dynamic DT990s. I don't know if it's the Pro, if it's the Premium. Um, I don't know if it's the 80 ohm or the 250 ohm ones, but these are a good headphones too. They're actually also... I, there are some that go over $200 and some like this one is only 160 With more expensive headphones, you're going to get a bigger, a larger impedance. And the, this is the spec of it. It's called ohms. If you have a higher ohms, the harder they are to, to drive um, and you need the more power for the headphones. You might be confused about that. You probably know what impedance are in electrical circuits. It's basically the same thing. The higher impedance, like 250 ohms, it, it's going to be very, very hard to give um, enough volume on like a phone which doesn't give that much power to the headphones so yeah that's something that i'm not going to get into at all but 80 ohms i'm pretty sure these are fine to run on your computer just don't run an 80 ohm headphone on your phone so these are the headphones that i really want and i think will be my next purchase the the sennheiser 58x jubilees um these are a mass drop um, exclusive headphones. If you don't know what Mass Shop is, it's basically a, like a bulk buying website that has, still has a good reputation, but they basically partner with different companies. Like they partnered with uh, Sennheiser in this case, and they get a beloved product, they tweak it, they you know, approve it or whatever, and they sell it at a much, much reduced price. Um, and they, yeah, you can just read all the history here. You can, I'll link uh, these in the description. And they sell as a very reduced price, but they're not always available. They're they're in they're in these things called drops where they're only available for like a week for like seven days. But they're they're but the there's only the the break between when they're available or not is short. These are the 580 the 580Xs. They're similar to the very very old Sennheiser HD 580s. That, that's really old. So this is like a new re-release of that that's it's not exactly the same thing but it's similar from all the reviews and all the research i've done everyone's saying that these are the best one best headphones you can get for 150 dollars so I, even so as i showed you before the 598s they're actually more expensive than these um uh, these are all us dollars so and these sennheisers people have been saying that they are close in sound quality to 500 or 300 dollar sennheiser headphones which is crazy they're 150 dollars so uh, I really recommend these. The only thing with the 580X Jubilees, their sound stage is pretty narrow, even for close for open backs. They're still more open than, than closed back headphones, obviously, because they're still open. But you know, they're more intimate than most, like than the 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 compared to the Sam the Sennheiser HD 598s. These are very very cl close feeling. So. I, don't, I keep doing this, but that's that's the way I can visualize. The sound is like only bouncing around in this area. The 598s, they're really big. Closed back headphones like this. The 5AX Jubilees, the sound stage is kind of narrow, but the imaging and like the pinpoint accuracy of, you know, the heads, the footsteps are not just in front or on the side. They're, they're like a 46 degree angle. Like the imaging is superb uh, on these headphones. Everyone keeps saying. So yeah, these are good. They're only $150. So there's one day left, but you're probably watching this later. So wait till these come back on sale. Um, they're usually always only $150. So definitely get these. Um, if you live in the US, if you don't live in the US, there are some import fees. So that's something you have to live with. Um, yeah, these are really good and these are the next headphones I'm going to buy and these headphones are also regarded as really really good headphones for gaming because these are the AKG K7XX which I'm pretty sure is similar to the K702s. Yeah, inspired by the legendary uh, AKG K702 65th anniversary edition and these are good uh, headphones because they have a, a wide sound stage as well much wider than the 580X Jubilees, but their imaging is also good 
they're and so that that's very very good for for gaming and they're also just good quality headphones um the akgs so i don't know too too much about them but they're 200 dollars, so they're a bit more expensive side um yeah so these are actually good for gaming as well but some people have said that they prefer the audio quality of the sennheisers for like music so if you're doing more than gaming i'm pretty sure you should go with the 580x's but don't quote me on that you know, audio is mo mostly subjective, is more subjective than is objective. So yeah, if you can, try to listen to the headphones yourself in the store or something. Now, uh, this is very, very extra. Most of you probably won't need these three things or these two things that I'm recommending. If you have expensive headphones, and if they say, if you see the spec sheet, it says like 250 ohms or 300 ohms of impedance, that means that your, your, mother your motherboard uh, especially your phone. Your phone will not be able to power those expensive 250 ohm plus headphones and they're gonna sound really really quiet and just sound really really as bad or not bad but just not as good as they, they as they could be. So you need something you need more power and juice to you know give the headphones its fullest potential and you need an amplifier uh, for for that you need an amplifier to power the headphones this is regarded as a really really good budget amplifier and DAC and these are going to be a bit more expensive but since you're already buying like $300 headphones that have a high impedance a $60 DAC and amp that's nothing to you so okay final <laughs> final post editing correction um so when you're buying $300 headphones that are that have like 300 ohm of of impedance um i you don't want you probably already know what type of amp and the power uh, of amp you want but um if you're a beginner if you have you know high impedance you also will probably have to will have to actually pay more for an amp um so basically like a 300 hundred dollar headphone will probably need like a 200 hundred dollar plus amp uh because those, they're more expensive amps because they provide more power and you know the more power uh, I mean the, the higher impedance of headphones the more power they need uh, so you need a more expensive amp or or amp and DAC comp or amp or DAC combo or if your if your computer motherboard is noisy or if you you know if you play in your headphones you notice that you hear a lot of computer noise you may need an amplifier and a, a DAC so these two um, amps that the amps and DAC, they're actually amps and DAC combos. These are the ones, the ones I'm showing you right now on the screen, the, the FX Audio X6 and the next one, which is the FIO E10K. They're actually, uh, they, they say on the spec sheet that they're really recommended for um, headphones with a max um, 150 ohms. So the 58X Jubilees that I talked about earlier, those are 150 ohm headphones. So these two amps that I'm showing on the screen are good and actually recommended for the 58X Jubilees. Uh, so yeah, if you have, if you're gonna get the more expensive headphones like the 6XXs that, that are also on, on Master App, those are 300 ohm headphones. These two amps and DACs will just not cut it. You need to buy more expensive amps or DACs. So yeah, final correction, and let's get on with the video. This is the FX Audio DAC X6. Again, Amazon choice. Reviews are good. Um, it's a DAC and an amp, so. Uh, basically an amplifier just you know it amplifies the volume and a DAC is just is, in general a DAC is just a digital to audio converter so your phones have a DAC everything that you can listen to headphones on has a DAC but these are higher quality DACs so yeah this is the FX Audio X6 DAC these are very good YouTubers have reviewed and raved about these they're only $60 US and this one is the FIO E10K this is also a very popular one I don't know which one is better um, I'm pretty sure people have have actually said that they prefer the FX Audio DAC XX, which is cheaper. So go for that. Um, but these these amps and DACs are only can't really power your 300 ohm ohm headphones. For those headphones, you really want to buy DACs and amps that are like $200 plus, which again is expensive. But if in the first place you're already probably rich enough to buy those amps and DACs, and those, that's only if you're really really serious about audio. Again, if you're just a casual gamer or even a sort of competitive gamer, you're not gonna you know, bother with these amps and DACs, or we probably won't, will bother with the cheaper ones because um, the, the the headphones that you're gonna buy are well not they're they're still pretty up there in the ohm, like maybe they're 80 to 150 ohms, but they don't need a 200 dollar amp or DAC. So this video was very very long, um, uh, but I really wanted to go in depth and show you um, other alternatives to gaming headsets. Hopefully, if you made it through, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna stop the videos before it gets uh, even longer. If you have any questions, uh, you can join my Discord server link in all my descriptions. Go to the support channel and just at me and I can try to help you out. Thank you so much for watching. 
Uh, oh, one more thing. This is a video that I highly recommend. I'll link in the description. This is Z Reviews. He's a he's an audiophile on YouTube and very entertaining. He has a video called Gamer Guide to Audio Gear. This goes in depth into which headphones you should get. He doesn't talk too much about microphones. Uh, I think he does talk a little bit about that, but he's a, an expert in, in headphones. So go to this video, check out. He has so many, like look at that. These are all headphone recommendations. So he knows his stuff. Check out this video after you're done this one, obviously. Thank you for watching this video. I'm not an expert in audio, but I am, I think I know my stuff when it comes to just gaming gear. So thank you for watching and don't buy a gaming headset. <laughs>